Hey there, this is Rochelle Morgan from Show Me Hope and Soundscaping Source. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to do the holidays this year when it's the pandemic. So I'm recording this in the month of December. We're looking forward to quite a few winter holidays, depending on the cultural traditions you come from. And then, of course, we'll be looking for a new year rolling into 2021 here in less than a month. So a lot of us are thinking about the holidays. How are we going to handle things this year? It's going to be different because we can't gather the way that we use, usually do or that we might usually do. And, you know, things are scary and weird and it's a pandemic. And so we might not even be feeling like celebrating the holidays. So in this video, I want to give you some ideas some tips for how to get through this holiday season in a way that is supportive for you and for the people that you care about the most. Okay, I'm gonna share some slides. All right, so the holidays during the pandemic, how are we gonna do this this year? There are three things that we're gonna talk about in this brief presentation. The first thing is that we need to acknowledge the losses this year. The things are different. And so we need to talk about how to acknowledge the loss so that we can decide how to move forward with the holidays. We're going to talk about how to adapt beloved traditions and also talk about considering some new experiences. I'm also going to share some technology based solutions and some low tech solutions to give you some options for celebrating the holidays this year in a different way than you might be used to and to be able to involve people of all generations all across the globe, wherever your loved ones might be. Now, the really important first step here is that we acknowledge the losses that we have been experiencing during this pandemic. We first got news of the pandemic early in 2020, so it's been almost a year that we have been dealing with the, um, the fear, the uncertainty, the changes that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought with us. So there's a lot of things that you may be grieving for right now. You may be grieving for a specific person or specific people. Maybe you've lost some people to COVID or because of COVID, because they were isolated or, or something like that. It's really important that we acknowledge that grief and that we take time to feel that sadness and acknowledge the, the loss of that person or those people in our lives. You may also be someone that doesn't have a close person who has died, but you're just the, the weight of the world is heavy on your heart. I'm one of those people. I know that there are hundreds of thousands of people in the United States who have died and many, many more worldwide. And so that puts a, a gray cast over this holiday season. So we need to acknowledge that grief. You may also be grieving for other losses, like the loss of a job or your home or your daily routine. I have kids who are school-aged and so we are certainly grieving the loss of the, the you know, holiday programs at school and, and um, the kinds of things they would get to do with their friends this time of year. So we have lost many holiday traditions this year. We couldn't get together in big groups for Thanksgiving. We couldn't travel for summer vacations um, like we might do otherwise. Um, maybe you skipped out on trick-or-treating on Halloween. We've lost a lot of things. So it's important that we acknowledge those things as losses and that we are grieving. Um, we do not have to move full steam ahead into the holiday season. And it's really important to know that you can feel sad. You can feel the loss. And if you want to, you can opt out of the holidays. You can choose to skip the whole thing if you want to. If that's what's going to feel best for you, that is okay. Uh, my 10 year old daughter, she opted out of Halloween. <laughs> we didn't, uh, except for the candy part, she did eat the candy, but she skipped out on a lot of, a lot of the aspects of Halloween because she, um, on that day, she just did not want to deal with the fact that she couldn't have it like normal. That's all right. So if you feel like you just want to skip Christmas day or New Year's Eve or whatever, that's okay. All right. Now, if you do want to figure out how to celebrate these holidays, one thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is figure out how to adapt some of our beloved holiday traditions. So we're probably not gonna be able to do certain things. We're not gonna be able to have big family gatherings. Um, you may not be able to go to um, a big church service or 
um, a parade, things like that, where lots of people gather. Those events aren't really happening this year and may not be safe for us in the midst of a pandemic. So we need to consider other things that we can do to adapt those traditions. First thing is we can't adapt everything. And so it's important that you consider what is most important to you and to your loved ones. So in my family, um, gathering for Thanksgiving is something that is a beloved tradition for us. However, you know, watching football together or playing football together is not really an important tradition. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't, but it wasn't the most important thing. So the most important thing for us to figure out how to do was to get on Zoom and spend some time with each other. Um, if, uh, if something else is a bigger tradition in your family, then we figure out how to adapt that. So you consider what is most important to you. We also want to get creative with both high tech and low tech solutions. I'm, you know, in, in my thirties. And so I, I tend to think of like zoom and online games and things like this that involve the internet and that sort of thing. Um, other people might not be so comfortable with that, but they may be real great with figuring out how to do things through the mail or through porch drops and that sort of thing. So we want to get think in both directions here. Also want to consider some new experiences. So there are things that maybe you've never done before that you can do this year during the pandemic. Something that has been new for me, um, well, not really new, but I used to do cross stitching when I was a little kid in middle school, and I haven't done it for a really, really long decades. <laughs> I picked up cross stitching again during the pandemic. So part of what I'm doing this year for the holidays is cross stitching a, a few small little pieces to share as gifts. So that's, that's a new thing for me this year that I wouldn't be able to do in the midst of all of the uh, hullabaloo of the typical holiday season. So there might be new things for your family to do or for you and your loved ones to do during these holidays. So consider those as well. A good place to start with that is by considering your values, what's most important to you. Uh, maybe it's really important to you that you do some acts of charity during this season. Maybe you would normally would be volunteering at, um, at some kind of charity shop or event or something. Well, there are ways that you can adapt that, right? So think about what's most important to you and what new experiences might branch off of those things that you've done before. And again, think about the high tech and the low tech options that are out there for you. So what are some of those options? Well, high tech, the big thing this year is Zoom. Right, so we've been hearing about Zoom a lot. I'm recording this on Zoom right now. Zoom is a really fantastic video conferencing platform where you can have lots of people log on from different places. It's a free app and it just takes um, clicking on a link and then everything happens automatically and you get into the meeting. Um, on Thanksgiving, Zoom made all of their meetings unlimited. So um, on a normal day, the uh, the, for a free plan, the meetings are limited to 40 minutes if you have more than two people on the meeting. But they made it free on Thanksgiving, so I would guess they may do that again for some of the other holidays coming up. Um, but if you do want to get a paid Zoom account, it's only, I don't know, $20 a month or less. So that could be a really cost-effective way to get together with your family. FaceTime and Skype and all the other video platforms are also good options. I heard of one family where um, one of the older members of the family could only figure out how to get on FaceTime. And so everybody else got on Zoom and then one person got on FaceTime and then they held the FaceTime up to the, the computer so that she could see the people on the computer. It, um, it's hard to explain, but it worked because she was able to get on and see people one way or another. It is really nice to see each other's facial expressions and what your haircut looks like <laughs> so many months into the pandemic and hear your smiles and, and all of those things. Um, so it's worth getting comfortable with video calls. If you're in a family, if you're in a multi-generational type group, then help each other get comfortable. You know, if you need the younger people to help the older people get on the tech, that's cool. Um, it's a good, can be a good family bonding opportunity. It is helpful on Zoom to plan your interactions a little bit because um, if you have a big group, especially 
you can't have the small conversations that you might have if you were all, all in a room. So um, there are different things that you can do there. Um, one thing that we did in my family on a birthday party was have everybody tell a joke. So everybody brought a joke and then the birthday girl got to pick the best one. So think about what might work for your family and what could be fun to share. It could, this could be a good time to share funny holiday stories or um, stories from childhood, that kind of thing. Um, and this is a good time to record those conversations too, so that you have that oral history in your family or in your group of loved ones. All you have to do on Zoom is hit record, save it to your computer, and then you have that video file forever, as long as you keep your computer. Um, you can also adapt some of your traditions to do on Zoom. So maybe you can open up your gifts together on Zoom. Maybe you can draw names to choose who's going to buy who which Christmas present. Maybe you can get on Zoom to count down um, to midnight and have a, you know, raise your glass to the new year. So um, figure out how to adapt some of your traditions and do it over Zoom. The Marco Polo app is another great option if you need to have some asynchronous interactions. So this is um, an app that you can download to your mobile device and you can record videos or, or take pictures and send them back and forth to other people who are also on the mobile on the Marco Polo app. It doesn't save your data. So it's a secure way to share things um, with multiple different people in your life. You can also just send videos and photos by text message. That's really good for one-on-one -on -one interaction. It can be a little bit harder for groups. Now, another thing that you can do to interact with each other online is to play online games. A lot of games have been adapted so that we can play online. Um, Jackbox is some of our favorite in my family. Um, we learned about this in November, and so we played Jack Jackbox games together over Thanksgiving, had a lot of fun. And then cards.io is a really easy to use platform. It's just like you're sitting around a table and, and dealing cards to each other. You know, you can play hearts or euchre or, or whatever else other game you tend to play in your family when you get together. Those are the high tech options. And we also have low tech options. Of course, we can send cards and letters and, and that sort of thing. Some of those are, you know, People my age and younger have maybe haven't done a whole lot of that. So this may be an area where the older people in your family or your friend group are helping the youngsters to learn how to interact this way. Some unusual ideas for the mail. One thing you could send back and forth is a circle journal. You could buy a blank book or something similar and write a note, put it in the mail, and the next person writes a note and puts it in the mail, and then it circles around all the people in your in your circle. <laughs> and by the end, you have this one collection of writings, of letters that you can share, that you can treasure, you can look at in future holidays and remember what it was like back in 2020. Another idea is for somebody to create a puzzle, to cut up the pieces, and then you could send one piece at a time or two pieces at a time and build the puzzle together. That can be really fun if you um, use a service like Shutterfly to create a puzzle out of a picture or something like that. It can be a really fun way to use the mail. Another idea is to write an add-on story as a family, or you could write an add-on song where you each write a verse. Um, basically, you start the story, you mail it to the next person, they add to the story, etc., all the way around the circle. And again, you have a creation at the end. You can also do this with arts, crafts, you can add to a painting or add, you know, create quilting blocks whatever works for your family or your circle of friends. So mail is especially helpful if it is um, going long distance. If you are closer to, to each other, porch drops and pickups are another great way to interact without having contact, without worrying about spreading the virus. I heard of a lot of people sharing favorite dishes over Thanksgiving or bringing people plates of food, that kind of thing. Of course, gifts, you can drop those off, pick them up. Something to think about is whether you want it to be a surprise or something that is planned in advance um, that can add some different layers to this experience as well. Okay, so those are just a few of the many ideas that are out there for how to celebrate the holidays this year during the pandemic. I just wanna give you a few final tips 
from a mental health perspective, first of all, make sure you stay low pressure. This year is not going to be picture perfect. Okay, it is, it's, it's different. We're in a pandemic, a global pandemic. So keep the pressure off yourself to make everything perfect, exactly right. Give yourself a break and just enjoy the holidays for what they are this year. It's really important that we're aware of other people's needs too. And we're all going to be in a different place with the holidays. I might be feeling super jolly holiday spirit one day, and then the next day I might be feeling down. That's going to happen with my kids, with my mom, with my friends, with my coworkers as well. So we want to be aware of each other's needs and make sure that we're not putting on pressure um, that could be painful for somebody that we love. And finally, remember to focus on what is most important. The reason the holidays are different is because we are protecting each other from the coronavirus, okay? We are helping each other to stay safe. Um, and we're helping our communities to keep the level of the, of the virus down as well. So what is the most important this year is that we get through the holidays together, that we get through the pandemic, and that we can continue to enjoy each other's company and our traditions and our, our love for years to come, okay? Keep your eye on the prize, focus on what's important, and stay safe this holiday season. All right, so thank you for tuning in to some of these suggestions. If you are looking for more ideas, I encourage you to get on your favorite search engine and look for um, Zoom holiday party or holiday socially distanced or something like that. You'll find lots and lots of ideas out there. Now, if you or someone you know is struggling with stress or sadness or big feelings related to this pandemic for the holidays this year and this pandemic year, we are here to help. You can contact Show Me Hope by calling the Disaster Distress Hotline. I'll share it at the very end of this video. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, someone was there to answer your call or your text and just give you some support, some support during this difficult season that we are experiencing together, okay? You are not alone. We're all in this together, and we are going to get through the pandemic and see the other side of this disaster and get to enjoy our holidays like usual again, okay? Thank you for your time today, and I will see you again soon.